please uh, uh, give us some background on that. That's briefly, when we talk about the animals, my last book is called The No Mammal Manifesto. And I look at mammals as a discussion. It, the industrial production and consumption of mammals that's destroying our health, is destroying the planet. You know, looking at cows and pigs and lambs. And so I advocate through this book four reasons to reduce or eliminate our consumption of mammals. Uh, first and foremost, emotional, because we are mammals. And I believe that eating within the mammal family is a little bit like uh, cannibalism and that the consumption of that for our own cholesterol and blood, diabetes, um, cardiovascular disease, the rest of it is very harmful. Um, the, the industrial production of mammals is destroying the ecosystem. You know, we're producing so much, so much corn and, and, and agricultural products to feed to the cows, to feed to the humans. Uh, the ratio is way off. The Amazon's on fire because Brazil's biggest export is beef and it's shipping it to China. China's the biggest client for, for Brazil. So it's, so it's cutting down Amazon rainforest to grow crops, to feed the cows. We cut up the cows to freeze them and ship them off to China. So it, the ratio is way off and it's not sustainable. And so to, to live in harmony with our environments, I advocate for you know, reducing, if we want to eat meat, we can choose what we want to eat. We're omnivores. We can choose to eat like a fish or a chicken or turkey. There are plenty of animals we could eat that don't include mammals. So just the discussion around mammals. You touched on um, just my, I mean, looking at, um, at races in the world and, you know, living here in the U.S. with Black Lives Matter and, you know, the education that's needed, the conflict between races that's happening around the world is absurd in the sense that all non-Africans left Africa only 75,000 years ago. And that 75,000 years ago, there were 70, 70 Africans sailed across or paddled across from Eritrea to Yemen, started populating tracts of land, ex over-exploiting, moving on, moving on, moving on, arrived in, in um, you know, Australia probably 45,000 years ago, Europe only 35,000 years ago. When Homo sapiens sapiens arrived in Europe, they found Neanderthal, which were like an earlier migration, and we were able to mix just recently with their scientific evidence to mix a little bit with Neanderthal, who came from Africa. Um, 35,000, between 30 and 33, 35,000 years ago, we crossed over the Bering Straits, colonized um, the Americas. And Madagascar, only 2,000 years ago, was colonized from, from uh, Indonesia. But they're all Africans. We're all Africans. <coughs> the lighter skinned ones, when we arrived in places where we did not need, um, you know, the melanin, you know, from the sun, were cooler temperatures. Maybe a bunch of albinos broke off, broke off from the main group of people and got lighter skin. But for whatever reason, people have different um, tones of skin and different characteristics, but they mean nothing. If you take the DNA sample from an Englishman, a Chinese, and an Aboriginal Australian, their DNA is identical. You can hardly tell it apart, but the external characteristics are different. But you take two Tanzanians who live across the street from each other, their DNA is so much different. Or two Nigerians, or a, or a, a, a Beninois with a Senegalese, you know, their DNA is so different, vastly different than between an Aboriginal Australia, a Chinese, and an Englishman. Why? Because Homo sapiens sapiens have been mixing it up in, uh, in Africa for two, 2.4 million years. But us, us, us Africa diaspora, you know, all, all, those who left Africa um, before the waves with slavery and all of that, they came later. But the earlier ones that left from 70,000 years ago and became the Europeans, the Chinese, those Africans, um, we're only out for, you know, for 75,000 years. And that's not enough for the DNA to change that, that much. It changes a little bit. So what you see on the surface of the skin is just superficial. Another thing I wanted to touch on was with, with Nolin. This is very important. To achieve the SDGs is gonna take a lot of innovation. It's gonna take new technologies, new approaches, new ways of thinking. And for that, we need everybody on board, especially women. Holding back half of humanity is holding us all back. It's holding back all of humanity by holding back half of humanity. And the fact that Nolene has to pick and choose a few, you know, um, exemplary women who've achieved great things, you know, it's, it's a bit sad because, you know, these ones that aren't known, one, we need more women examples to inspire other young women. STEM, um, you know, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, you know, studies show that in high school levels, equally men and women are interested boys and girls. But when you get to university, the percentage drops down to something like a third or a quarter of women and the rest are men. We need to find out why. Especially because, and I hate to say this, Riz, women are smarter than us in some ways. <laughs> you know, men, men have, women's brains and men's brains are very different. 
women can multitask. No, no, you're right. You're right. You're right, Adam. You know, Adam. One, one second. I, I, yeah. I, I really want. I really want to say something. No, I 200% yeah. agree with you. In, in my last session, actually, I was telling uh, all, all the ladies and, and other participants. In, in my personal and professional experience, I have found women to be more responsible and more sharp. In my high Their school, science. in my college, yeah. in my university, yeah. all my maths and science teachers were women. But look at this, Riz. When you dissect a woman's brain and you dissect a man's brain, two things. If you dissect it, if you scan a man's brain when he's thinking, and scan, let's look at the scanning first. When you scan a man's brain when he's thinking, right, you pick up on where the activity is taking place, it's concentrated in one area or another. We're either left brain, frontal lobe, right brain, whatever it is. You scan a woman's brain, the whole thing's on fire. Women use their brains, you know, the whole brain. And the reason for that is the neural connectors between the left and right hemispheres and the neural connectors between the, 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 the two lobes and the, and the, and the subcortex, you know, they, where the subconscious takes place, they're connected. The whole brain's connected. Whereas men, we're not so connected, our brains. And for that reason alone, it shows that men, they're, and, and here's the amazing thing women think differently than men and each of us on our own can think that, but when we're together, our, our, our weaknesses and strengths form a whole that's not one and one, it's like 11. We're stronger together than we are apart even. But if we're gonna hold back half of humanity, it's better to hold the men back. The women holding back has, has impeded progress of humanity for, for thousands of years. Now look at the difference. Studies have shown, and you can get you know 100 books on this. Um, but um, it shows that the reason for the difference is that from the hunting and gathering, for millennia, humanity was hunting and gathering, right? Men were out there with their spears, holding their spears, running around trying to stick it in something. You know, they're hunting. But nine times out of 10, they came back with nothing. Women were the gatherers. Now, when you're gathering, you have to remember all the different types of plants. You have to be able to scan the horizon. You have to multitask. Men, they don't multitask so well. They grab their spear, they focus and they stick a spear in something, right? We're still running around with our spears in our hands. But women, their brains evolved a little bit differently. Now, but together you need the focus, but you need that multitasking. That's why parliament should be 50-50. Executive boards, corporate boards working together 50, with women and men are much more successful and can, and can relate with the market. You know, you can innovate. So when we're gonna innovate solutions to the SDGs, we need women and men working together and listening to each other. You know, we need to break down these barriers we need to connect and collaborate. And then who knows, time travel, exploring the cosmos, you know, solutions to poverty, to AIDS, to, to Corona. Imagine all the challenges we can overcome if we get all that brain power together, working together. And not like you're, you know, you're saying to thousands of, of children who, you know, who are dying every day, or, and that's not including the malnourished ones who can't nourish their brains enough with enough food to be able to, 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 to innovate. You know, when everybody has enough to eat, you know, and the challenges of just struggling to survive, imagine with all those minds that are freed and can innovate through and can collaborate through technology. This is where, you know, in some ways the smartphones and all this can distract people and hold people. But think of all these minds finding ways to connect with others, to innovate and come up with ideas like we are now with France, you know, Europe, you're in South Africa. You know, here I am. My son found a cell phone tower I could park under. So I have 5G. <laughs> that we can communicate and connect women and men together. And then the SDGs, that's like the first step. Imagine that we, how far we can go as a species through science and technology into the future. Or we don't make it and we fall back into the dark ages, you know, back into, into might is right and, you know, and, and selfishness and self-centeredness. It's, it's a nightmare. So we have on one side, we have hell. On the other side, we have an amazing heaven. But the choice is ours. We have to, and, and we have the, the roadmap, we have the framework, we have the SDGs that can put us in the right direction.